Good morning and welcome everybody to this MFILES Quick Tips. Today we'll be talking about permissions. If you could just do me a quick favor and raise your hand just to make sure that you can hear me. I want to do an audio check before I go too far. So if you can hear my voice, uh, just raise your hand. That gives me a quick telltale that everybody can hear me okay and we're having no audio problems today with WebEx. That always helps. Awesome, thank you very much. You can lower your hands. Well, let's get started with today's presentation. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna be talking about permissions. Today, permissions will be, def see how permissions are def defined? You know, basically a definition of what they are, and then we'll take a look at that inside of MFILES. How are permissions used inside of MFILES? They're used many, many, many different areas inside of MFILES. Some of the different tools that are inside of permissions, the control, and then I'll end that with a demo, and I'll demo with an actual object, a document, and then I'll also take, we'll take a look at a view as well. Okay, permissions. Sort of the definition of permissions, what is it? Sort of consent authorization. So you're being given the right to do something or to see something. Now in MFALS, the way it does that is many different ways. So if you take a look, MFALS can actually control the permissions on an object, like a document, a class, a value list, and et cetera. Now, when you make changes to those items, you will see something pictured in this presentation. A yellow box will appear, and then will actually disappear. And what it's telling you is permissions have changed. So they were one way before, now they're a different way now. Okay, what type of permissions can MFILES control? Great question. As we take a look at this information on the screen, we can see you can, well, let me back up before we even talk about, it. if nothing is marked, read, edit, delete, or changed, basically the person would not see the object. We'll use object as our example. So they would not see the document. Can't see it in a view, can't see it in a search. So if they can't see it, they can't do anything with it. Now, if you give them read access, what they're able to do is actually see it but they can't check it out. If they can't check it out, they can't make any changes to it. Now, if you give them edit capabilities, that also includes read, which would make sense. They gotta see it to edit it. Now, delete and change are a little unique. They work independently, so you get no other rights with that. So if you're given the right to delete, you can actually delete the object, but what you have to understand, you are not permanently deleting it. I'll use the word destroy. You're not destroying it. Only your MFILES system administrator can actually destroy the document. Now, if you're given change, this one is actually very powerful. This would allow you, oh, before I go any farther, this also does not encompass any other permissions. So the change allows you to actually change the permissions in our example on the document. Now, there's another thing that happens 
obviously permissions could come in from many, many different areas. So potentially you could have overlapping permissions. When that happens, the permission that has the highest level is the one that is granted. So in this example, I have three circles. We'll call them P1, P2, and P3. So three different permissions coming together. So if I have permission one is read, and permission two is read, but permission three is edit, the individual will be able to edit. Now there's another caveat with that. When you're working with permissions, you want to actually allow the permissions. So here's a screenshot of what permissions would look like inside of MFILES admin. And this is for my example here, our document. So you see the column where it says allow, and then you see a column for deny. When you're setting up permissions, you never want to use the deny. If you don't want the person to have that permission, you unmark the allow box. They are not given the right to do anything. But at a different level, let's say farther on in your workflow, inside of M files, maybe you want to allow them to view something or read it. You would be able to do that. But if you use the deny column, at a lower level, that would actually hold through all the way through, and they'd be denied for even reading that if that's something that you wanted to allow at a different workflow in that process. Okay, let's actually take a look and see how this works. Okay, so inside of MFOWS, let me actually go to, let's see here, I've got a couple machines set up. So I'm gonna go to, ah, there we go. So inside of MFOWS, I have added a document. So that's sort of the example we've been working with. So I've got a document called Stearns Bank. Currently, this has other marketing documents as its class. Down here at the very bottom of the metadata card, it's talking about permissions. This is where you would actually go to check to see what permissions are being given for this document. So when I click here, I can actually see different levels here. So if I wanna just see what my access is, okay? If I wanna see what everybody's access is, pretty straightforward. Now, if I go to change the permissions, so I'm going to click cancel or OK. So I'm going to change the class. When I do this, I'm going to go down to a class called unclassified. When I make this change, notice the yellow box will appear. Permissions have changed. Now I'm going to save this. When I go down here to the bottom to my permissions area, I will notice, yes, permissions have changed. Now let's validate this real quickly. I'm gonna go to Marco Demo 2, and I'm gonna search for that document that we just gave full rights to, Stearns Bank. There it is. I'm gonna turn off preview there. and we check permissions here, we can see yes, full permissions. Now, when I go back to Marco Demo 1, I'm gonna change permissions again by changing the class. And this time I'm gonna go back to marketing, other marketing documents, I'm gonna click save. 
The other thing that you're noticing here as well is it is versioning the document also. When I check on my permissions, okay, now it's really just me or Marco Demo one. If I now go back to Marco Demo two and I refresh the screen, I do a search for Stern's Bank, I get nothing. It is gone. So this is really just that high level demonstration of what happens at the object or document level for permissions and why permissions are so strong inside of M files. Now, one of the other things that I talked about in today's presentation, or I should say in the outline, was controlling the view. I'm going to go back to all here. You'll notice that we don't have a view called pictures. Now I'm going to go back to a admin login. There we go. And you can see I have a common view called pictures. You can actually control the permissions with inside of a view as well. If you can think of it, we can do permissions for it. That's what make this so powerful inside of M files. So I'm gonna right click on my pictures, go to properties, and you'll notice I have a permissions tab. Now please understand I'm the administrator right now. That's why I'm seeing common views. Permissions only work for common views, which would make sense because common views are shared with everybody. So I'm gonna to go to permissions. I've created a group. Now currently I'm not sharing it with anybody. I'm gonna click add and I have a group called photos. Now inside of this group, I've, excuse me, I've added Marco Demo 1 and Marco Demo 2 is the only two users to see this common view. So when I select that, I'm gonna say allow and apply. <coughs> Click okay. Now, when I go to Marco Demo 1, refresh my screen, pictures appears as a common view. If I go to Marco Demo number 2, refresh my screen, we're going to see pictures is added as well. If I go to a different user, Marco Demo 4, and that's validated in the upper right hand corner here, you will see that they do not see pictures. So again, just another way for me to control permissions inside of M files, in this case for a view, and I demonstrated also for a document. Now again, this is very high level overview of what you can do with inside of permissions. So pretty cool stuff. Now what I'd like to do at this point is open it up for questions. And I do see one that came in here. Can I apply permissions in a workflow? Yes, you can. And that is something that actually happens all the time, because when you advance a workflow item in a workflow, more than likely you are no longer gonna see that anymore. Somebody else sees that, so permissions are working there. We had another one come in, another question. Great question. So this question is, is when we have a person comes into the company and then their manager asks us to set up permissions for this new person, like person ABC, 
And the new person, let's see, how do we find out hey, how ABC is set up inside of M files for permission? There are so many different ways to apply security to within M files, and not all of them are accessible. Okay, great question. When we are actually designing, let me see if I can get to this. So let's. Uh, I'm going to bring something up here. Give me just a moment. So what you have inside of actually M files is you have a couple different things going on. And what I'm doing right now is I'm actually logging into my admin council for our cloud services. When we set up M files, we actually try to organize everything so it is organized in a very common fashion. The first place that we do or we talk about is how are the users access coming into M files? Is it coming in through AD? Do you want to apply that? Great. We'll use that as a guide. If you want to apply even more control inside of M files, then we strongly urge that you actually use a couple different things that are available inside of M files. And let me see if I can get control here. You can create actually user groups inside of M files. So if you have unique groups, maybe you have a group called um, general users, or you have a group called managers. The other way that you can do this as well, and we recommend starting here first, and then you can actually create your groups, is you can create a named access control list and that you can have people applied to these groups. So when you create a new named access control list, you can actually choose, in this case, my users are like demo one, demo two, demo three, and I can add those and then I can actually give them what kind of permissions I wanna use. That becomes a list that is available to use inside of M files. Now the group is also just another way to control that also. And if we take a look at my user group, I created a user group called Photos. So the recommendation is checking in the groups and also the named access. What we try to do is we try to set up these groups inside of M files so when you do get a new user that needs to match ABC person at the company, we can locate the first person, then we can add the new person to the same groups that the person we're matching to. Now, I do wanna be honest with you here, permissions, is something that it is very difficult to understand. And a lot of times we need to do a little digging. So if you do need additional help with that or additional help, please let us know at software at marconet.com. That is a great question, and this question is coming from a follow-up. How do I know which group somebody is attached to without opening up the different groups? And the comment is, is we have a large environment. Now, for this person, what I will do is I will take that question down. Right now, my quick answer would be is I don't know a way to do that other than actually opening up, opening up each one of those groups. But what I wanna do is I wanna do a little research on this and see if there's any other tools that would help with the permissions inside of M files. But a great question. What I wanna do is minimize this, go back to our PowerPoint see if there are any other questions out there. 
I'm not seeing any more questions at this point. What I'd like to do is share with you that we are actually out of ideas. So at the end of today's webinar, there will be a survey. Please share ideas for the next MFILES Quick Tip that you would like to see. We hold them on the third Tuesday of every month. So the next one is July 16th. The QR code that you see on the screen, if you scan that, that will take you to the registration page. And as soon as we have a topic for next month, you'll see it listed there. So again, at the end of today's webinar, please share ideas that you would like to see for the next quick tip. I would like to thank everybody for attending today's session on the MFILES Quick Tips. Have a great day. Bye-bye.